Hi there, dear Truth Warriors. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Petra. I'm a life coach and advocate for survivors of narcissistic and emotional abuse. So there have been very many topic requests. Thank you for sending in all your requests. And one that keeps coming back or keeps coming to the foreground is please make more videos on narcissistic friendships, which I would agree on because there are very many videos here on YouTube and there's so much information on, on the web um, with regards to uh, narcissistic family dynamics and relationships, but there is not as much on uh, toxic or narcissistic friendships. And the thing is, um, before I get started, uh, we all have narcissistic tendencies. We all have the traits. These traits are needed in order for us to function in society, to go through life. We need a certain level of narcissism within us. But the thing is, when it starts, when you see that a pattern is forming and that you are feeling, that would be the first red flag, you used to feel energized in these uh, uh, friendships but now you come away feeling depleted, feeling as if all energy has been sucked out of you. Um, you just uh, feel tired, you feel drained. So that would be a huge red flag, going from feeling energized to feeling drained. And this usually has to do with the fact that the narcissistic friend, it's all about them. It's all about what they've been through, what they're going through at work, uh, what their family's like, uh, what's, you know, what their issues are. It's all about them. And uh, when you try to get two words in, that's when you will be shut down or, you know, or they suddenly in a, in a huge hurry, they don't have time to listen to you. This can happen, you know, now and then it can happen. But when there's a pattern formed here, and this, this is what, narcissistic abuse is about when there is a pattern because when you re keep reproducing a pattern that is when it becomes toxic so the first one you used to feel energized when um, uh, interacting with these friends and now you feel drained that that is a huge red flag the second one is that they always want to be right and um, they're right is usually masked as being very helpful. Um, they, they're always helping others, they're always helping you, they're always listening to you. Um, it's, that, it's all a mask, it's a facade, and they need to do this in order to keep you engaged in the friendship. So when you find yourself maybe challenging them, you know, with, with, their, um, with their need to be right, you challenge them on that, on that topic, um, this is when they're going to put all the stuff that they've done for you. So all their uh, helpfulness and all their generosity, they are going to put onto a scale and say, these are the most, you know, famous words, after all that I've done for you. And they will list all the things that they have done for you in, in the last months or in the last years, um, what they meant to you, uh, how they stood up for you, how they had your back in certain situations, it will all be put on the scale. And usually what they'll say is, look at what I've done after all I've done for you and you have done nothing. So that's completely out of balance, which is not the truth. But this is it, you know, where they want the spotlight on them all of the time. So they are really not concerned about what you have meant to them, what you have done for them. Um, it's all about them. It's all about them getting credit, credit for all the wonderful helpfulness that they have given to you and their generosity that has been shared with you. So, you know, it's not about putting friendship on a, on a scale. It's not about finding um, who did more, who did less. It's got nothing to do with that. If you are in a healthy friendship, then it will not even matter how much you have invested into the friendship and how much they have in invested. It is all a two-way street. It, it merges together, there's harmony. And if there is a conflict, you'll find that you are both open to talking about that, talking through it looking for the solution so that the balance is there you know the dark side and the light side as as with everything in life um, it is also there in the friendship and it, it will not even be necessary to discuss who has done more than the other it will just even out and it will just feel right so flaunting their generosity 
which is what I, uh, you know, just said. I touched on that as well, where they wanted to be in the spotlight, but also flaunting their generosity. And then go into great lengths to tell you what they did for someone else. Um, I remember one of these uh, uh, narcissistic friends that I was involved with, she would find it absolutely necessary to keep harping on the fact how she is always so good to mankind, to humankind, how she takes um, food to the homeless shelter, how she uh, looks out for, for um, uh, stray animals, how she um, is very capable of empowering other people and uplifting other people. So we, don't get me wrong, this is all, this is great stuff, which is stuff that we all do, you know, uh, but there's no need to go about telling other people about what you have done. You know, that, that's integrity, where you do the right thing and you don't need to make a news broadcast of it. But this is something that you will notice with narcissistic friendships is that it has to be broadcasted. They have to let everyone know all the good that they have done. And it will go as far as look at me, the modern Mother Teresa. Look at what I can do. Look how I can lead the people to the light. Look how I'm um, living my life. It's, you know, it's, um, it's, it's lived through honesty and integrity. You know, the very fact that people will keep harping on this fact or these toxic friends will keep harping on this fact, um, telling you or, or blowing their own horn, so to speak, that again is a huge red flag. Um, another thing I noticed that would be the fourth red flag is that um, they will be very uh, engaging with your friends so maybe you don't have mutual friends in some cases you do but they will be very engaging with the, with your friends with your family um, with maybe even co-workers but as soon as they are alone with you then they will trash talk they will put your family members down they will put your friends down they will say nasty things about um, friends family or uh, friends acquaintan acquaintances so there's a lot of trash talk going on behind the scenes. And what I notice is when I uh, confronted this friend with uh, all the mean stuff she was saying about my family and friends, she completely denied it. And then she demanded that I come up with evidence because she said, you're just a, a loose cannon. You're shooting empty bullets. You need to come up with evidence that I trash talked your family and your friends. I mean, that's ridiculous. Instead of saying, oh, well, maybe, yes, maybe I did say something nasty and I was having a bad day, you know, whatever the excuse may be, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. No, it will be completely denied and then they will ask you to produce evidence. That That's just crazy. That's not even a normal way of thinking. So just beware that that can be a fourth red flag all the, the, the trashing and, and negative self-talk. Um, terrible things were said to me about my, about my mother, about my daughter, about my new relationship at the time, um, about my clothing, my hair, my makeup, whatever it was. And then once she'd done that, this toxic friend, then she would go about trashing the clothes, the uh, comments, the families of other friends that I had. Um, just very, you know, that this is what, what comes from someone who is an empty vessel. This is all that they can spew, is all the, the negativity, the trash talk, trying to put others down in order to lift themselves up. Um, wanting to be in the spotlight all the time, I would say that's the fifth red flag. And I think I just mentioned that, you know, all my points are sort of melting into each other but um, they want to be in the spotlight all of the time. So that would mean that they would um, take over a whole conversation. If they walk into a room, they will demand the room, demand the conversation, and make it all about them so that you have this group of people sitting in a room. And these people are sort of manipulated, not sort of, they are manipulated into being quiet and giving all their attention to the toxic person, where they will just talk about random stuff. They might talk about deep shit. <laughs> you 
you know, they, they will whatever they can to demand everyone's attention and they will then control that whole conversation. And if you come up with valid points, if you bring up a point, if you challenge them in whatever it is that they are speaking of, then you will find that it's sort of, you know, this it's all the, the energy that is sucked out of the room because they they don't like to be criticized. They don't like you to present uh, valid points in a conversation. So once again, they will take that point, turn it around. This is all the manipulation. They'll turn that point around, bring it back to themselves so that they once again are in the spotlight and it's all about them. This is extremely tiring. You know, I remember going through this so many times, in particular with one of these toxic friends. It is absolutely exhausting to sit and watch how this plays out. And no matter how hard you try to steer away that conversation, um, they are uh, they demand that control and steer the conversation back to themselves. So the best thing to do in that situation is just to get up and leave the room or get up and leave the space and um, choose not to be a part of that. I know it can be very challenging at times, but the best thing to do is to just step away from that energy. Um, the sixth red flag is that in the beginning, this is what I noticed, in the beginning of the friendship, they will applaud you and commend you for the, the power within you, for your self-esteem, for your clothing, for the way you look, for the choices in relationships, for how good of a parent you are. So there's a lot of appraisal coming from, um, from the beginning stages of these friendships. Um, they will pump you up and, and make you feel good, recognize your inner power. This was said to me several times, you are so powerful and you don't even realize it. And no, I didn't realize it at the time, you know, and with, with power, um, that is how I defined it, is that um, when you're willing to look at your, your, your inner strength, looking to look, look at your, um, willing to look at your weaknesses, willing to work on yourself, um, using the gift, whatever gift you have been given to empower others, um, that is my definition of what being powerful is. And, you know, you go through periods in life where you don't realize and you don't own the fact that you have so much inherent power. But the fascinating thing with uh, narcissistic friends and toxic friends is that they are so attuned to your power. They can see all the good in you. And this is the part of you that is mirrored back to you because they will mimic and they will mirror, um, copy and paste your behavior and your uh, gifts so that you get the feeling that you are involved with someone who shares, um, who just shares mutual interests, who uh, has the same sort of personality, who has the same gifts, um, who has all of this goodness within them. And you will just feel as if you've come home in this friendship. You will feel so compatible with this person and I know with some of my, uh, the, or some of the narcissistic friends that I was involved with, is that I felt there was really this feeling of sisterhood. And uh, two of them I really looked up to as being an older sister or as being on my level. And I just love that feeling of um, togetherness and, and uh, uh, companionship. But this is how they manipulate you into believing that they are on the same level, that they are vibrating from the, from the same frequency. And this, at the end of the day, is simply not true. So doing this in the beginning of the friendship where they're applauding you and commending you and, and really building up your self-esteem, they are doing this because they have an ulterior motive. When you are pumped up enough, then they will bring you crashing down. They will go to great lengths to destroy your inner power and to destroy your self-esteem. And this is also where um, consciousness comes in. Now, what is consciousness? You know, uh, to explain that in a nutshell, uh, consciousness is your perception. 
How do you perceive yourself? How do you perceive the world around you? How do you perceive and translate someone else's behavior towards you? And when you come to that awareness, um, it's not so much about um, putting blame on someone else's behavior or blaming a person for what they do or how they show up in life, but it's really that in th there is a gift that is given to us through toxic friends is that they will mirror back to us where our wounds are, where our shortcomings are, and then it is up to us when we raise our level of consciousness to look at those wounds, to heal them, to correct our behavior, because we all need to correct certain behaviors that we have within us. And if you're willing enough to look at those, you know, just being honest and open with yourself, to look at those wounds and to be committed to healing those wounds that is when you get to a different level of consciousness where you can see uh, toxic people but you don't get involved with them. You can sort of observe them from afar but do not allow them into your sacred space. So if anything, you know, coming out of these um, toxic friendships, I have learned that it is really about them mirroring stuff to us. So it really, it's, it's a gift that is given to us wrapped in sandpaper. And if you're willing to unwrap that sandpaper and, and be honest and truly look at it, look at those things that are keeping you um, stuck in a rut, so to speak, and you're willing to, to dive in there and, and work through that stuff that you're going through, you come out for the better. So that is what I have learned, you know, is that I'm, I'm grateful to these narcissistic friends that I've had in my life because they have shown me a way of, of healing myself. They have shown me um, how to become a better person. And it is not to say that I, I will invite them and have them uh, have dinner with me at the table. I will not invite them to sit at my table but I am grateful for being able to see through their toxic behavior that I needed to take a different path in life. So, you know, this is, maybe it has something to do with a, a form of forgiveness where you can forgive the other person for all the wrongdoings or the perception that we've had of them doing wrong to us. But at the end of the day, we have come back into our own. So not inviting them into the VIP space but just being grateful for the gift of uh, healing that they have been a catalyst for. So I hope that has helped some. I will make more uh, uh, videos on, on the dynamics of narcissistic uh, friendships. For now, thank you all for tuning in again. Stay safe, stay well, and look forward to speaking to you very soon. Bye for now.